Good day to all our viewers. This joint Rap Pamet webinar session is the second of the BRAP Pamet webinar series, brought to you by the BioRisk Association of the Philippines Incorporated and the Philippine Association of Medical Technologies Incorporated, with both associations' goal of enhancing the capabilities of the laboratorians, especially those working in laboratories handling the SARS CoV 19 virus the causative agent of the COVID-19 disease. This is the clip of the first speaker, Mr. Edson Simon. The video clip of the second speaker, Mr. Louis Cadeo lecture is presented in another video. Kindly hit the like icon and subscribe button to get access to more training videos. Hit the notification bell too, if you would like to be notified by email of future lectures. Enjoy viewing the video as much as we enjoyed planning and preparing this for you. The Biorisk Association of the Philippines, in collaboration with the Philippine Association of Medical Technologists, warmly welcomes you all to its second joint webinar. The Biosafety Cabinet or BSC is one of the most important component of engineering control in your laboratory second only to the infrastructure. Similar to selecting your first car, you need to know what it can do, where would you park it, and most importantly how to drive and maintain it. Let's dive into the process of BSC selection, installation, and proper use and maintenance with two expert speakers. They will share with you their knowledge and experiences so you can drive your BSC and get home safely. It is my pleasure to introduce our session moderator for today's webinar. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and colleagues, Ms. Michaela Sayo, BRAP Assistant Treasurer. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for tonight's webinar. I'm Micaela Sayo, Assistant Treasurer of BRAP and the past president of PAMET Bulacan. And I will be the moderator for tonight, the second BRAP PAMET webinar series made possible by PAMET's e-learning and BRAP distance learning machineries. May I ask the second speaker? Sir Louis, are you okay? Our second speaker is a Philippine registered medical technologist with 11 years of specialization in histopathology and phlebotomy and has more than five years experience in laboratory biosafety, biosecurity, and bio-risk management. Thus, earn, earning himself a professional certification in bio-risk management status granted by the International Federation of Biosafety Association in Ontario, in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. He was recently accredited by the National Sanitation Foundation Singapore as a Biosafety Cabinet Field Certifier supported by the IFBA Global Affairs Canada and the Asian Pacific Biosafety Associations. Colleagues, please help me welcome the incumbent Bureau of Public Relations Officer and the Biosafety Officer and Chair of the Institutional Biosafety Committee of St. Luke's Medical Center, Bonifacio Global City, and Quezon City, Mr. Louis Berlin Cadao. Hi, good evening. Topic for today would be uh, best practices and failure response procedure in using the biosafety cabinet. So, okay, I just wanna share first my, my exp the certification last year, no? Last 20, November, 2019. So this is the NSF biosafety cabinet certification workshop in Singapore. So as you can see, we, we do the BSC, uh, all parts of the BSC, we unti unti namin ganon. So kung sa if you want to see with me, here's here's me in the picture. Okay, so for starters, I want to share first the biological risk laboratory acquired infection reality that cannot be ignored in reality biotechnology. This is published way back in April 2015. According to this, outbreaks have been mainly associated from improperly used biological safety cabinet. So that's why we are discussing the 
proper use of biosafety cabinets. So it's always uh, been uh, associated with outbreaks. So what's our objective for the topic today? So first, it's a preparatory steps to take measure that work will be done safely on the BSC and the BSC is, BSC is functioning correctly. Second, best practices on usage, on safe usage of while working in the BSC. Third, provide guidance on the loss of cabinet power. For example, there's a brand out or uh, there's a technical loss of power in your BSC and other emergency. Topic one, uh, preparatory steps. Uh, before, prior to working with infectious material inside the BSC, there are a few important steps to take to make sure that work will be done safely and the cabinet is functioning correctly, including maintenance, disinfection, and organizational workflow. I'll be showing uh, to the next few slides what will be your preparatory steps in using the BSC first, okay? First, you should verify the most recent certification date. It's the certification date is ideally done on an annual basis. You should see the assumptions, this kind of sticker uh, put inside your, uh, outside your BSC. It should be either NSF 49, or EN124969, either of the two they will be using in uh, maintaining or certifying your BSC. Later on, Edson will discuss these two, what's the difference between the two. So you will, you will check the date if your BSC is uh, cert certified annually and it's what parameter are they certifying. You should be careful here in uh, certifying or other scopus certifier, some of them are not doing the downflow velocity. So you, you should be checking what they're doing in your BSC during the certification or certification. Okay, it's two, don your appropriate PPE. This is based on your local risk assessment. Additional PPE may be required for the work you'll be performing. As for the COVID-19, uh, additional PPE would be respirator, your goggles, so it will be depending on your local risk assessment, what organism are you working on your BSC. So added tips, uh, tuck your gloves on the sleeves, no? so you put over the sleeves. Number three, turn on the blower. Allow sufficient time for the air to purge. You should purge your BSC first before using so you so the pressure reading to stabilize to stabilize before initiating work. Generally, most manufacturer uh, the purge time they suggest would be three to five minutes. Number four, ensure that air intake in the exhaust grill are free from obstruction. Inward airflow of you can use tissue paper for this to verify an inward airflow. This tissue should be going inward. So if somehow it be going outward, there's a problem in your uh, BSC in regards to your airflow movement. Number five, uh, clean and disinfect the interior surface of the cabinet. Disinfect using 70% ethanol. This is most recommended disinfectant uh, because it don't corrode the BSC or other appropriate disinfectant. It's always depending on your local risk assessment. A quick tip to facilitate easy cleanup later on, absorbent towel may be replaced on the work surface, as you can see. So you can use absorbent pads uh, in your working uh, area of the BSC. Number six, uh, disinfect items with 70% ethanol before placing inside. So all items that will be placed inside should be disinfected first to avoid introducing potential contaminants into the cabinet. Trying, trying to bring all materials you need without overcrowding the cabinet. So don't overcrowd the BSC. So it will disrupt the airflow inside the BSC. So just put all the necessary materials you'll be needing for the work you'll be uh, doing. Uh, number seven, uh, waste disposal and cleanup supplies should be placed inside the working area. So all the cleanup and disposal should be inside the BSC. 
We should include a bottle of appropriate disinfectant like this while working is being performed. This will reduce the need of re to remove your hands from the BSC. Removing of hands in the BSC will disrupt the air curtain and the airflow inside. So as you can see, it's the airflow and the air curtain uh, inside the BSC is very delicate. So removing in and out of the hand, your hands will disrupt this airflow. So you should have uh, one disposal waste, waste disposal and one absorbent pad and one bottle of appropriate disinfectant. Number eight, divide the cabinet workspace into three sections. One, clean items on the other sides. Clean items. Number two, uh, this will be your work zone. Number three, this is your waste, waste zone. It's from clean to dirty uh, protocol. So same uh, scenario in uh, any PCR lab. So you will do the same in your biosafety cabinet. So you will divide each section. So your workshop should, should be, shouldn't be your way zone and your clean item shouldn't be uh, with the, your way zone or your work, uh, work zone. Quick tip, aerosol generating equipment such as Vortex mixer should be placed far rear of the cabin as possible so because this will disrupt again your airflow no all your vortex mixer should be in your rear so sa likod ng psc taller items such as waste bin should be placed toward your side walls on the side of the bsc so not hindi sa gitna not in the middle uh, not and uh, sa harapan so sa, sa gilid side on your side walls to de-minimize your airflow disruption. Again, you'll be protecting your air, airflow disruption uh, every time you're working in a BSC. Number nine, oh, adjust the air chair height so armpit are level with the sash opening. So you, you must use an, an adjustable chair. So don't use a monoblock chair no, in your BSC. So it should be adjustable to your uh, height and level. Okay, so you're... If you're ready, if you have done all that, so you're so you you are now ready to begin your work. Okay, topic number two: biological safety cabinet best practices. Okay, it's always important to follow best practices while working in a BSC to help maintain adequate airflow within the cabinet, leading to prevention of exposure and release of pathogens. So this will, I would be discussing the best practices for your safe usage of the BSC. First, it's so obvious, so one person at a time in using BSC. I will share some, uh, this is an experiment. If you heard the meat buster from uh, YouTube or National Geographic, Baker it partnered with Meatbuster and they presented in ABSA in 2018. So they uh, they conduct an experiment uh, using dummy of three people, uh, three dummies and two dummies working on a BSC. They want to prove if the claim of manufacturers uh, really one person at, at a time in a BSC. They want to prove na. Tama ba to or baka gusto lang ng manufacturer na <coughs> bumili kayo na isa pang BSC? <coughs> During the presentation, uh, this is the what happened to the conclusion of their experiment. So I suggest you watch in YouTube, there's a full video about this. According to the experiment, to guarantee full containment, do not use more than one person at a time. There will be cross contamination will occur, and personal protection will be lost at 12 sash. So again, so I think uh, the manufacturer and the uh, other uh, like the WHO and other institution, a suggestion of one person at a time at the basis is really true. Number two, um, work towards the back and do not rest elbows on the grill surface. No, so there's a space should. Your elbow shouldn't shouldn't be touching the girl's surface. Uh, you'll be working on the back, not going forward. So as you can see in the illustration. 
Okay, number three, avoid rapid sub sideways movement. So excessive movement, hands and arms through the front opening, such movement can disrupt the air curtain in the front of the BSC. So your hands should be moving perpendicular. On, uh, you, your hands shouldn't be going sideways. This will disrupt your air curtain. I don't know if you can see the air curtain. This is an illustration of the air curtain. They use a uh, uh, smoke just to illustrate the air curtain. This is a very delicate uh, part of the BSC. So you should be careful in entering, entering and exiting the BSC. You should be slowly and perpendicular, okay? So number four, segregate clean from dirty and keep waste container on one side. So you should have waste container inside. So contaminated material should be discarded in waste container located towards the side of the cabinet workspace. Again, do not discard materials outside, outside the, the cabinet. So hindi pwedeng mag-discard outside. So you, have, you should be discarding uh, contaminated materials inside the cabinet. Okay, another uh, very popular best practice. Open flames such as buns and burners should not be used inside the BSC. Open flame can create turbulence, disrupt air for flat patterns, uh, can damage the HEPA filter. If absolutely necessary, do use of non-flame alternative like sterile disposable inoculation loop. So I hope uh, no one is using uh, Bunsen burner uh, right now. So I, I will share with you what will happen. No? This is the same um, presentation from ABSA in the, the one I showed you earlier. There's also an experiment again. It's titled, does heat really affect protection of inside the BSC? This is the normal operation on the BSC. Air should be going downwards. This is always the normal operation of BSC. When a Bunsen burner, there's a Bunsen burner inside the BSC, what will happen to the airflow? It's all, almost swirling. I don't know if you can see. So another illustration. So the airflow is going upwards. So it never, hindi dapat, so it never should be, the air, the air should not flow upward. So it's always be downward. So, okay. So that's the effect of Bunsen burner. So, so I hope no one is using Bunsen burner right now. And again, HEPA filters are not immune. This is, this is what will happen to your HEPA filter if you use Bunsen burner. So this will create contamination in your, uh, if you're uh, in your agar plate or you're culturing something or during your PCR, if you have damaged HEPA filter because you're using Bunsen burner, so this will happen to your HEPA filter. Okay. Number six, all items should be surface decontaminated before removal. So, all I, so every time you remove an item, it should be surface decontaminated. Disinfect the interior surface of the cabinet. So use disinfectant that is effective against the pathogens used. So, so for COVID-19, so the disinfectant, best disinfectants used will be sodium hypochlorite at 1% uh, at 10,000 ppm for five minutes contact time or 62 to 71% ethanol for 10 minutes contact time. Okay, quick tip again, if a corrosive disinfectant like the sodium hypochlorite will be used, the surface should be wiped down after disinfection and sprayed with distilled, distilled water or 70% ethanol just to avoid corrosion of the stainless steel surface. Okay, this is uh, one topic that uh, always debatable to everyone. The use of ultraviolet germicidal lamp to, dis to disinfect a contaminated BSC is strongly discouraged due to the limited effectiveness at disinfecting inside the BSC. 
Uh, I will show. I will show the. I, I know. I will show you, you this. During an R, the effective the effective killing rate of UV will be at ninety percent. But at you as you can see, as the R goes by, the effectivity killing rate of B, uh, UV is slowing down. So as you as as you can see in the experiment. Only at 24 hours will be the organism will be killed using the UV light. So you have longer contact time. So you know UV is also also harmful to your body. So what the WHO suggests, UV irradiation work as only use as secondary method in disinfection. Only after if you have already surface decontaminated. Okay, topic number three, incident management. Okay, let's go for a while. Okay, this procedure is intended to describe the steps which you should be taken to protect workers' safety in the event uh, of biological safety cabinet failure. In just in case uh, there's a failure in your cabinet, uh, what 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 step will you uh, will you take? So this this number three topic. Okay, signs of biological safety cabinet failure. If any of the following signs of biological safety cabinet failure are observed, work should be stopped as quickly and safely as possible. This is our just this is our the sign of safety cabinet failure. One, power failure. Power failure. Lights within the cabinet will go out and the blower motor will stop. No airflow. So if you can't feel the downward airflow in the cabinet, alarm sounding or visible on the cabinet. Most modern biological cabinets are commonly equipped with audible visual sounds. Uh, unusual noise. If unusual noises are squeaking, squealing, or loud humming, knocking, buzzing, or they could indicate a uh, failure or eminent failure of cabinet mechanical and control systems. Unusual smell. Unusual smell such as ozone or smoke could indicate fire within the cabinet. So what are the what are the steps if this uh, five scenario will happen? So anong gagawin po natin? First, stop. Stop your work immediately. So don't try to uh, do your work if these things happen. Take quick action and remember, do not panic. So, wag po kayo magpapanic. Number two, secure any infectious material when possible. Again, this when possible, secure any infectious material by securing cup tubes like this one, covering plates, closing open bottles. Okay. Number three, Disinfect and remove gloves inside the BSC. All gloves that we have been used should be disinfected and be and be discarded and be discard and be removed inside the BSC. After that, close the sash. Immediately right after, leave the area until the power goes back on, and until or, or until the issue has been resolved. Place signage on the cabinet. Notify others area on the area of the potential exposure. So you must put signages so everyone should be guided that their, uh, their BSC is not working. So there should be a name and contact person written on the warning sign. Okay, number five. Once power returns, reopen the sash and allow five minutes to purge. So, pag bumalik yung power, you allow five minutes for, para ma-purge siya, no? To allow the air to stabilize before recommencing. Uh, if power is not re-established, wait 30 minutes for possible aerosol. To settle, uh, don't of additional PPS required by your local risk assessment 
open the sash and surface decontaminate the BSC. All work items prior to removal. Again, warning, do not use the BSC until the issue has been resolved. Again, 30 minutes ang i-wait natin if the power is still not, is not yet uh, established. Uh, an interruptible power supply or UPS is capable of 10 minutes of uninterruptible power. This is enough time uh, for you to safely shut down the BSC, properly secure the infectious material, and disinfect surface and other items. Okay, number five, number six, spill response procedure inside the BSC. So even seasoned medical technologies uh, uh, can have accidents also, no? So nagkakaroon ng spill. So before uh, doing cleanup uh, of any spill, a risk, asset, a risk assessment should be performed to determine the severity of the event. What are the factors to be considered in your risk assessment? First, the volume of the material spill. Gano ba siya kadami? For, second, the potential titer of an agent involved. What are agents you are working? So, para alam mo paano siya papatayin. Or it did disinfect or it did decontaminate. Third, if the spill is confined to a small area, or spread on multiple surface. Fourth, whether your PPE may have been contaminated on the process. So these are the things to consider. So other tips, so to help you uh, during the risk assessment, I suggest you download uh, the pathogen data sheets. So as you can see, there's a detailed uh, section on each uh, organism you're working. So there's a stability and viability, laboratory hazard, uh, exposure. So you can download this in iOS or Play Store, or you can search the net. This will this, this will greatly help you in your risk assessment assessment during uh, spill cleanup. Okay. In the event of high risk spill inside the BSC, which can involve large volume or multiple contaminated, contaminated surfaces, high titer of infectious agent or gross contact, this is the general spill cleanup procedure. Uh, I will not go uh, one by one with this, so uh, I would suggest na magkaroon kayo ng uh, workshop or hands-on para mas matandaan ng tao, no? So I'll just highlight some of the few. Before doing anything, let aerosol clear up for five minutes. Leave the blower open and such remain at, appro at appropriate, no? So para yung ma aerosol uh, mawala. Okay, so meron lang ako share So hindi ko alam kung, kung, alam, kung alam yung dapat binubuksan to. This is the catch tray. It's called the catch tray. Each BSC has a catch tray. Mostly, most uh, BSC linis yung catch tray. So, I would suggest you open yung catch tray. So, marami siyang minsan dumi. Kasi ang nalilinis lang yung uh, what will be clean always will be the uh, upper surface. But the catch tray is always be forgotten. So, if any liquid pass through the grill, so Lalagyan disinfectant. So, af after all of this, so, nalinis na, na-disinfect na. Allow the BSC to, for 10 minutes before resuming and shutting down. And if ever, if the spill is deemed minor, just follow the 7, uh, seven to 20 steps. This will be shared. This, uh, this slide will be shared to all. I'm sharing the latest spill inside the BSC. Uh, this, uh, this is the latest drill we have. Uh, I would suggest to have a biological spill spill kit always uh, near the near the BSC. As as early as I have said that practice in doing will retain uh, more on the people or the your associate 
on regards to the uh, spill drill. So, kahit reading or audiovisual, konti lang na retain. So, I would suggest na gawin nyo to in your institution. So, mas ma-retain as yung muscle memory ng each of individual mas maintindihan nila. So, they will they will learn more if they do the drill themselves. In this drill, we use uh, we use glow germ. So, they could appreciate uh, if they have cleaned the BSC well. So, this one is glow germ. Okay, for closing thoughts, important, important thing to remember, uh, personal safety counts first. So, iisipin nyo muna, sarili nyo muna na yung safety nyo muna. It is important for laboratory staff to report the incident to their super report the incident to the sup supervisor or by safety officer as soon as possible. This provides the lab laboratory to assess the root cause of the problem para hindi siya maulit. So uh, this is for improvement purposes. Every institution should have a standard operating operating uh, example of this standard operating procedure must include protocols for incident management, best practices, preparatory step step for safe usage of the BSC and spill response. Dapat to lahat naka incorporate sa uh, standard operating procedure nyo. so everyone can be guided. So may, if you have new uh, uh, employee ma orient sila mabuti okay so thank you for listening stay safe so I'm Ella hello thank you sir Louie for that informative uh, presentation and for showcasing your best practices in your institution so we'll now proceed to our Q&A portion okay from Francis Andaya, can the speakers po give an order of doning of PPE before working and doffing of PPE after using the BSC? For a while. Okay. Uh, okay. Anyway, doning of PPE would be first would be gown. Second would be your mask or respirator. Sorry, wala dito sa laptop. So three would be the goggles or the face shield. Fourth would be the gloves. For the doffing, still the same. So, yung nahuli. so gloves would be the first for the doffing. Goggles or face shield would be the second. Uh, third would be the gown. Then the fourth would be the mask. Then before doning and then after doffing, should, you should clean your hands. So the key with doffing is practice especially uh, so not touching the yung maduming part ng PPE. So dun kasi medyo delikado eh. So I would suggest body system in doffing and doning and practice in doffing. Yung pagtanggal. Ayun. So I, I hope nasagot ko yung tanong. Yeah, yeah, Sir Louie. Okay, another question from Mr. Brian. Sinkinya. Sir, in the absence of 70% ethanol as a disinfectant, can I use isoprophyl alcohol? Um, for the COVID-19, I believe ethanol would be the best. Uh, I have to check for the isopropyl alcohol. Um, I believe isopropyl have higher vol volatility rates, so I don't know if you can achieve the 10 minutes uh, contact time. Actually, the, as, if, as if you can read the WHO or CDC, the suggestion would be always 60 to 85%, but the recommended will be always the 70%. Uh, why is it? 70% would be the ideal because it's lesser vol vol volatility but higher effectivity rate on killing the virus. So I, I hope I have answered that. Okay. Then another so, question. Uh, is it advisable to use a spray inside the BSC? Will it not affect the airflow? 
Um, for cleaning, uh, as you can see in my presentation, there will be two, uh, two or three scenarios that will you be using spraying. So one would be after you discard the material or you uh, unseen you name material. So so even if you have this this disrupt the airflow, you you have already finished what you're working. Second, you're cleaning the inside the BSC. So apparently, uh, don't worry. There, that's why there's always a purge time. The purge time will be stabilizing the airflow. It, it will it will really stabilize. Uh, like I said, it's around three to five minutes depending on your manufacturer. Uh, during the three three to five minute mark, uh, if your BEC is working normally and fine, uh, it will go. Your normal flow will go back to normal. I hope, if that makes sense. <laughs> and then. A follow-up question. If cleaning the catch bay tray, should yeah. be the BSC be working or it should be shut down? Um, it should be working. The, you need the, uh, what do you call this? The, the airflow, you need the, dito yung parang pinaka vacuum niya. So para hinihigop niya yung mismo uh, aerosol kung meron man. So kailangan mo yung nakabukas. Oh, okay. so, kailangan mo yung nakabukas. So, okay. uh, there are different types of BSC. There are BSC the walang walang uh, drain pan sa baba. So you have tutuyuhin niyo yung mismo uh, catch basin. So katulad ng Esco bago. Pero meron naman mga yes. nagagamit na ko na BSC. Meron siyang parang drain. So pwede mo pwede mo siyang basahin or hugasan. So hindi drain mo sa ilalim. So you have to look okay. sa insura ng BSC niyo. Uh, follow up again. How many times do we clean up our catch tray? Um, is it every two weeks, monthly? Is there any sir, recommendation for that? To be honest, I wala not see it kadalas, but at least once a week, which yes. is fine. Uh, okay. Ang pinakamalaking tanong kung nalilinis ba? Actually, nung, I would be honest, mm -hmm. meron ako minsan na-check. Nako, ang linis nung yeah. the mismo working area is so clean when inangat ko yung catch bay yung catch tray punong puno ng basura <laughs> hindi siya ano kasi talagang basura may ano ano may papel ganun so dapat siguro na tanong niyo nalilinis ba talaga or yun mas magandang tanong eh so one week would be fine naman one week would be fine uh, wala ko lang itang oh, okay one, once a week once a week yes. so Mas malaga malinis siya. Yeah, okay. Uh, another one, sir. Who is the yes. best certifier for your BSC? Is the seller of your BSC a good certifier? <laughs> okay. Actually, magandang tanong yan, no? So, yung sana una, yeah. yung sa oh, uh, uh, yung nakita nyo, kaya ginawa ng IFBA yung certifying they want to increase uh, field certifier actually hindi lang sa Philippines in the whole Asia Pacific because currently ito yung scenario no marami nagse-certify pero hindi wala silang regulatory body na hindi mo alam kung tama ba yung sinasertify nila yes pag ito lang tip ko no pag tumagal lang dalawang oras lang yung pag-certify sa inyo niloloko lang kayo ng kalas i mean you have you don't code ano ko makukot niya ako pero hindi dapat mabganon kabilis yung pag-certify kasi mamaya siguro pag diniskas ni Edison uh, actually pag compute pa lang ng mga inflow downflow is it will take around i don't know 6 hours kasi may mga grid grid pa yan eh so kung ang Nag-certify sa inyo, naglinis lang, tapos dalawang oras lang. Tapos, mama, kaya okay na po, palitan natin yung HEPA filter. So, ewan ko, baka hindi. Uh -huh. So, ikaw lang kung ito yun. So, ito yung aim nung, ano, nung certifying, certif NSF certifying, uh, field certifier na yung sponsor na IFBA. Para uh, maayos natin yung, ano, box. we don't know if nasa guidelines pa ba yung ginagawa. Eh. So, kaya, Kaya inuuna ko yung kanina na you should be careful, no? Dapat chinecheck nyo din yung ginagawa nung uh, nagsa-certify sa inyo. 
So, hindi ko pa masyado ma-answer ng direct. Ah. So, sa ngayon kasi ang nagsa-certify would be yung manufacturer. Mm-hmm. Ideally, dapat hindi. Yun oh, yun okay. Sa Ideally niya. So, you're one of them, sir? Already? America, hindi. So, sa Can- alam ko sa Canada, sa hindi rin. Ah, okay. So, so another question. Is an alcohol lump acceptable in the BSC? Actually, hindi ko lang na-post yung, ano, I, I would, ipo-forward ko yung link nung sa Bay, Baker na yon sa, yung sa ABSA. Meron din experiment doon na uh, using the alcohol lamp. Uh, yes. Same effect siya nung, mas malakas lang ng konti yung sa, uh, ang tanggap doon, yung kanina, mas malakas lang ng konti kasi mas mataas siya. Pero same effect, may nagkikreate siya ng turbulence. Hmm. So, hindi rin siya maganda. So, okay. Thank you. On the second lecture, Sir Louis focused on the proper procedure and best practices whenever we are working in a biosafety cabinet as well as the things that to be considered before using a BSC. He also discussed the BSC failure response procedure in case of untoward incident happen. These procedures must be properly followed by all personnel working in a biosafety cabinet to prevent aerosol exposures and laboratory acquired infections. We would like to thank both our speakers tonight for expanding our knowledge on biosafety cabinets as well as our participants for your time in joining us. I hope we all learn from tonight's webinar and bring home the knowledge that BSCs are the best engineering control we will ever have in our quest to win the battle against exposures and laboratory acquired infections. I'm also grateful for the people behind the e-learning activity who greatly contributed to make this webinar successful. BRAP's auditor, Professor Oliver Shane Dumawal, who is in charge of the technical platform and post-webinar activities, and to BRAP secretary, Dr. Laila Florento, for working hard just to make this webinar possible despite of the distance. Most importantly, to the support of our noble BRAP's president, Dr. Martin Moreno, and BRAP's vice president and PAMET's national president, Mr. Ronnie Puno. So thank you so much for your drive in providing continuous education program to our PAMET and BRAP members despite of our current situation. So beginning tomorrow, June 12, the videos of the first BPAMET or first BRAP PAMET webinar entitled Essential Biosafety in COVID-19 will be available for viewing in YouTube. Just search BRAP PAMET webinar or BRAP distance learning and don't forget to like and subscribe while you're on it and click the notification bell if you want to be notified by email of future lectures to be posted. This is another way of BRAPs bring you to a new knowledge and updated. Thank you everyone and hope you will join us in our next webinar. Good night and good luck on your post test. Be safe and bio safe everyone. This is Ella, BRAPs assistant treasurer and tonight's moderator signing off. From the BioRisk Association of the Philippines Incorporated and the Philippine Association of Medical Technologies Incorporated, we hope you enjoyed this lecture as much as we did enjoy preparing it for you. We take this opportunity to extend our gratitude to Dr. Leila Lenny Florento for managing and directing the webinar flow, to Professor Oliver Shane Dumawell who handles the pre and post webinar logistics, to Ms. Alessio, our webinar moderator, to the two pillars of their respective associations, Dr. Martin Moreno and Sir Ronnie Puno and to all you viewers out there for joining us. Lastly, kindly hit the like icon and subscribe button to get access to more training videos. 
hit the notification bell too if you would like to be notified by email of our future lectures. See you in our next video.